Hey guys, today I am going to talk about Rudy Alpha Investments video and it is titled Stores Reducing Exposure to Magic the Gathering and so let me tell you something about Magic the Gathering. It's very hard to sell and very hard to compete against Amazon. You know, they have $60 boxes for sale. Now again, they're not the best boxes but they are still boxes and these boxes cost a store a lot of money to buy and they cost between 80 to 50 and I, I mean some boxes if they're discounted they might go down to 80 dollars a box if you're lucky and you buy a lot but for the most part it's 80 to 50 84 50 for the boxes in higher demand and i'm not even talking about set I'm talking about draft boxes. We can go on with set, we can go on with the different types, collector boxes and so on. And each of them, you know, the margins are about the same. I mean, it's, a, it's they give you probably, assuming you can sell for a hundred a box, you probably have 16% margins, maybe a little bit more, maybe a little bit less. Again, depends on your community, quote community, and how much they care about your store. So first and foremost, yeah, Magic is one of these products that, you know, when Pokemon had its big boon, I remember Evolution. Evolution was 75 cents a pack. And suddenly people want to buy it for box breaking and other purposes for 10 to $20 a pack. That happened. That happened where all the crappy Pokemon Roaring Skies evolutions, even um, there, there's a really bad set I'm forgetting. There was a bunch of bad sets at the end of X and Y and they all kind of just lost, you know, they lost a lot of money after they rotated out, but then suddenly everyone breakpoint, breakpoint was not a bad set. I'm trying to remember, there was a really bad one. It's got Gyarados in the front. It's got like a shiny, uh, man, I'm trying to remember. It's got like a gold. This was a really bad set. This was like a horrific set uh, that no one wanted to open. And then suddenly it's quote vintage. And then people started opening it. Magic has never had anything close to what Pokemon had during the boon. And if you had dumped all your money in Magic and you have all these products like Dragon Maze that, you know, has been sitting around for years and years, and now you're getting, you know, the Crimson Val and all these Kaldaheim and all, again, all these products that are continuously on sale on Amazon. It feels bad because you could have had the same products on in Pokemon, right? And they would have sold out. So the current feeling, the current gut feeling, I can tell you this from what I feel too, is we should have bought more Pokemon because if the Pokemon sits there, devalues. You know, there, there's, there's still maybe a moonshot chance that suddenly the evolution, which is 75 cents a pack, becomes a $20 pack. There is no chance that Dragon Maze is ever going to be more than what it is currently. It's just, they reprinted so much. They reprinted the one valuable card, Voice of Resurgence, and Dragon Maze, and then changed the uh, card. So they, I think the interaction with Cascade with the split cards or whatever, they changed that too to make it even weaker. So in, in terms of like what's actually happening to a set like Dragon Maze, that was like their Roaring Sky. In fact, I would say Roaring, Roaring Sky at the time was even overprinted much, much more and in much less demand. And even Evolutions was in even less demand than Roaring Sky. And yet suddenly, every distributor, every store they, who held the old Pokemon can now move them. And that's a gamble. That's a gamble. And diversification in card games, My Hero Academia, One Piece, you know, anime figures, Legos, you gotta do it. Because you don't know which of these items are actually gonna retain value. So you can't just put all your eggs in the Magic the Gathering basket. You would go bankrupt. I mean, because honest to God, like, the Amazon prices, it reminds me a lot of one item. Every store owner knows the story of the item. It's Dungeons and Dragons books. You buy them from distributor for $25 and you see on Amazon for like $17.50. And 
you might think, oh, well, the customers will surely, you know, since they play so much at your local game store, they spend hours and hours, surely they can pay the extra $4 to get the book, you know, on hand from you. I mean, not that extra four. So maybe you would charge, let's say $30. You're making maybe extra $10 over what they could get on Amazon because your distributor is charging you more money than it's on Amazon by $4 and you got one $6 margin, which is reasonable because you let these uh, players into your store for hours and hours and hours, right? And the answer is no, they're not never gonna do it. They're gonna buy from Amazon and then they're gonna hang out at your store for eight hours a day for the next 10 years. Every store owner knows about that product and every store owner knows that their player base does not buy from the store owner. That those books just sit there and nobody buys them and bring their own books, they bring their own food, they bring their own, you know, let's say uh, drinks, right? They bring their own chicken fingers and greasy and they use your venue. Every single store owner, I can tell you, understands the Dungeons and Dragons crowd. Because once you have the book and the setup, it's just kind of a fun place for them to meet. And you know, it's got air conditioning, it's got Wi-Fi, it looks nice. And, but why do they need anything from the store? Um, it's almost like a library setup, but it's open later than a library. And that's a, a huge advantage, obviously, in this kind of audience. That's what magic is becoming right now. Magic is becoming a situation where very few people are going to buy from your local game store. Because there's just Rudy Chan's cheaper. He's selling them by the crate for pennies on the dollar. Um, distributors are selling direct on eBay now, sports and more and so on. That's where you see those very low prices. When a price is lower than a distributor, that probably is a distributor in disguise because obviously the distributor has margins and it's like, all right, I need to move this product. So let me sell below what I sell to the local game stores and uh, maybe I can just move a ton of these. Magic is, you know, I've already made a video about why I think the IP was very poor. It's not well positioned to survive long term compared to other intellectual properties like Nintendo. Like Pokemon is very well positioned to survive long term. I just saw like a ghost dog and this thing doesn't even look that cute, but it's blowing up the internet. So anytime they released a new Pokemon, just like even a randomly looking Pokemon, it'll blow up the internet. Magic doesn't have anything like that. They released a new car, no one cares. I mean, I play, I don't even know half the things they release, right? Otherwise I would be doing spoilers on them, which I, I don't know, nor do I care. And it's hard to pretend that I care about a uh, diversity spoiler, if you will. It's like, oh great, it's a, um, it's a, uh, no, I'm not gonna say it, I'm gonna get in trouble. But, but, but you know what I mean, right? It's like, oh, cool, uh, great, you know, Thumbs up for diversity and inclusion. Uh, so anyway, does, you know, our store is going to not buy as much magic? Yes, why are they not gonna buy as much magic? Cause it kind of sucks, man. It's, why would you buy a product when it's on Amazon for cheaper than you bought it for? Why would you buy a product when Wizard of the Coast is selling secret layers for a thousand dollars why would you buy a product when the secret layers have all the reprints and so on and it's direct to customer? Like you can see the writing on the wall. The, the reason Pokemon does such a, such a great job, um, A, it benefits because it's super casual. So people will come in, open some packs, leave, right? It's a very super casual thing. There's not, not gonna be a dude who's gonna stay, you know, Pokemon players, they're not really playing the game, they're collecting. Therefore, they're not gonna stay at your store for more than like 15 minutes after they open packs. Maybe to talk, hang out, whatever it is, but then eventually they leave. The magic player does not leave. So you do not want to attract a bunch of magic players to your store. I've learned this verbatim. Um, this is not a good idea. Bye guys.